What's going on, Port fans? Welcome back to another video on my channel. And today we're going to be reviewing Port Adelaide's Round 20 clash against the Essendon Bombers that happened on Saturday afternoon at Marvel Stadium. We ended up what being was a 59-point win. A pleasantly surprising win, to say the least, from the boys. A good response after a couple of weeks. Um, unfortunately, not getting the job done previously against the Giants, Richmond Tigers, and Brisbane. But they bounced back really well against the Bombers, so let's review it and have a look and see exactly how we won the game. My mum always said, life was like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. It was just one of those days for Port Adelaide where everything just went to plan and everything was switched on correctly. Our forward line was good, our back line was good, and especially our midfield was on all day, which uh, has been a little bit inconsistent of late, especially with the team's, uh, team's performances. So. It was good to see that everyone contributed equally and we caught Essendon a bit off guard, especially after their 10-point nail-biting win against the Gold Coast the week before. We had an opportunity to uh, take them down and we did it, and we did it emphatically, um, surprisingly. As I said before, it was just an amazing uh, game of footy, a good start by the boys, especially uh, with Robbie Gray getting a couple early on, Todd Marshall getting to the game early, and you could just sense that from the beginning... Uh, we were on and we were going to be in this game for the rest of it, which is a pure, it's a pure barometer for Port Adelaide. If you know uh, they're going to be good, they start well. And that's as simple as that, and they did. And now we've opened up our season again to hopefully make the finals a game out uh, and a bit of percentage behind Adelaide after their win against St Kilda. But nonetheless, we've got to focus our own terms and get the wins done. I didn't watch the game yesterday. Uh, I was out with a couple of media commitments, but... To watch the replay and watch it, knowing that we won, uh, made it all the bit sweeter. And credit has to go to Ken Hinckley. He made the tough choices at selection, uh, dropping Scott Lysette. And he also took out Garner. Um, and it was just... Yeah, Howard as well was the other one. It was just good to see that that type of uh, selection drama that we had. Fans were going off. They didn't understand the selection. And everyone was saying Kenny lost the plot. And... That's the type of performance that you get from making the tough calls, and credit has to go to Ken. He did did that, and it pays off, and that's exactly what you want from a footy team when you get that warning sent through the group to essentially get a response like that against a team that's pushing towards top eight. They're going to probably play finals Essendon and be a real contender, and to pull out that performance, well, it was a typical Port Adelaide performance, really. Pull it out against a top eight team who's... Uh, on the verge of making finals, and we pull it out. Pull it out of our asses, really. That's exactly what happens every once in a while. And if it was only consistent, we'd be playing finals and probably be top four. But it's not that case. Um, but, you know, a lot of upside to come out. And when you go with a win like we had yesterday, it's just all the more positive. It's all... The week is a lot better. You go into the game next week feeling a bit more positive. Although I could sense that throughout the faithful was a bit more reserved, the result. Yes, it was a good win, but essentially what happens next week is probably more the bigger question. Um, I'm more in the mood of, I'm sitting here right now, my team's won, I'm going to have a good week. And that's essentially how I'll take it. And that's how everyone else should take it, really. Because if you get too sucked into what's going to happen next week and the week after and start planning for the you know, four weeks, you start to lose the focus of what's what's happening right now and... I think that's the big winning part of this, uh, you know, this mantra that we have is one week at a time, and we won, we enjoy it, and once it hits Monday, you focus on the next week. But for now, enjoy the victory, Port fans, because it was very sweet. Had Essendon's measure from the start, really. It wasn't. Uh, we were getting predominated pretty early in the middle. Uh, they were able to get inside fifty really easily, and our, fortunate for our defenders who were awesome all day, the likes of Jonas Cleary. Westhoff down back on Brown and DBJ, who's just become one of the best halfback flankers in the league at the moment. He's in super form. Uh, they were able to just lock down any sort of threat coming out of Essendon's forward half. And once we finally get into the gear and started to create opportunities up forward, uh, that's when the the game was essentially won. And especially in the midfield, where we took out most, majority of the stats, 40 to 33 clearances, uh, 58 to 52 inside 50s. The big key factor for yesterday's game was that we dominated uh, the play, but we used the ball well. So 76% efficiency compared to 62. Uh, that's a massive differential in terms of um, a game of footy. And at Marble Stadium, that's when you have no conditions affecting you. You have no wet weather factor, nothing. 
it's just a clean, it's a clear game. It's how you want to play footy, and that's exactly how we took it. We took it uh, with efficiency, and we kicked 14 goals, two from set shots, which, from Port Adelaide's perspective, never happens. Never happens at all. Uh, but that was good to see. 14 goals, two. Connor Rosie would like his time again, two goals, five, but he was awesome up forward. It's crumbing as elite, um, and for him to have 22 possessions, you you sense that every time we lose, he looked he looked a bit lethargic, a bit tired, uh, and then he comes out with a performance like that. So that's really good to see that the kids are still going strong. Dersma brings out the bar and arrow. Um, best celebration in the league at the moment, and to him to bring that out in front of the Essendon faithful when we're up and we're winning, uh, that's it. it makes it even better to watch. One thing I did learn from the game is essentially this is Robbie Gray's world, and we're living in it. Um, that his class around the footy, you can put him in the middle, he'll win your games. You put him up forward, he wins your games. The biggest dilemma with Robbie Gray is to where to put him. And we played majority forward against the Bombers. He was really effective, four goals, still had 20 possessions, created chances, 10 score involvements from Robbie. And that in itself just shows how much influence he has when we're going forward. And he can be a main target. It doesn't have to be a key forward, but he can be a main target. And he'll win us games, kicking goals. And that's essentially what he did against the Bombers. Talking about key forwards, though, Marshall, Dixon, Ryder, all performed pretty well. Dixon probably was a bit quiet. Actually, he was really quiet. But the, his presence created opportunities for others, and he presented well. Um, he is out of form, but I think essentially the main thing from that is that he, just you got to keep him down there. Keep him down there. He creates chances. Marshall is really good with him in the side. Paddy Ryder was great in the ruck yesterday and majority down forward. Pete Laddams, sensational ruck work. He had, I think, seven clearances, 17 possessions. Was awesome around the ground in the ruck contest against Clark. And we found, I think we... I don't know if the mixtures are that exact right. I think, essentially, that's a better mix than what we've had previously. Having a taller forward line, it works well. And when you get delivery inside 50 from the likes of Houston, Amon, and Sutcliffe yesterday was sensational bringing the ball inside 50. Credit to him. I think he keeps his spot next week now because his, his game yesterday and that goal from the pocket, oh my God. Talk about a bit of magic from Sutcliffe. Houston, I just want to touch on, was fantastic in the middle. He was the key reason how we got the ball out and used the ball so well going inside 50. 29 touches. Uh, he was just awesome coming out. And DBJ, as I mentioned before, super game. Him off, off of half-back, 88% uh, efficiency with the ball and had 25 possessions is enormous. A couple of others, Boak and all that, you know, your regular ball users were a bit quiet. Boak was tagged by Clark, but he still had 21 odd possessions, uh, nine clearances. So uh, he was doing his role in the middle. And I think essentially when he can play that sort of role and others stand up, that's when you know the team uh, is building and looking really good because he doesn't have to carry the damn midfield. All right, let's get into the votes for round 20. A lot of key players were fantastic yesterday, but I'm going to give one vote to Connor Rosie. He was awesome around the ground. His crumbing was enormous. 22 touches, kicked two goals, five. I reckon he could have had, he could have had four. Four or five, for sure. He had five marks, and he also had 10 score on board involvements like Robbie Gray. So him around the footy is something you want. He uses the ball really well, and was just awesome against the Bombers. They didn't know what to do with him. Uh, two votes goes to Robbie Gray. 19 touches, four goals. Uh, really created chances up forward. He was super with 10 score involvements. And Robbie Gray's back. It was a Robbie Gray show yesterday. Three votes has to go to Dan Houston. Um, I feel like he was just super around the ground. 29 touches, had 10 marks. Kicked two goals himself. One with the last goal of the game from outside 50. He's a great ball user, a great kick. Um, and he deserved the three votes because he was awesome. A couple of mentions goes to uh, Xavier Dersma, uh, goes to DBJ, Sam Power Pepper in the middle as well. Uh, they all get honourable mentions. But those three were super, um, and it was good to see them standing up in a game. We had to win, and we did it well. But, Paul fans, that wraps up this Round 20 review. Thank you very much for watching. Leave in the comments below what you thought of yesterday's game and who was your best on ground. My name is Anthony. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, come the pair.